I was talking about retirement this morning. I was talking about retirement this morning. And, you know, it's people that hit me up and mainly Rita. Rita is the one that hit me up in the morning. And so we kind of have our little stand up meeting. Right. And our stand up meeting is we go through and we start talking about the different things that we got to take care of from a real estate perspective. Uh, we talk about the things that we got to take take care of as far as other companies that we consider as opening, different things that we fund in, who needs help. Uh, we go through our schedule or my schedule, coaching calls and everything like that, right? And there's a lot of new things and a lot, a lot of new opportunities that may or may not be on the way. Some stuff I'm worked on, some stuff I recorded that I haven't told you guys about because I can't say anything about it based off of the paperwork that I signed, right? But Long story short, you know, Rita hits me up and she's like, okay, you do this, do this, do this. And then we get to the very last part, which is the part that I dread. I like all of the rest of the standard meetings, right? We talk about, hey, what's the current status on this permit and this and all of that is good. And then we get to the very last part and then I start dreading it. And this is why I dread it. Over the weekend, I had an opportunity to chill. And, and anybody that's been paying attention to my channels, uh, you know that I don't really do any vlogging anymore. So I don't take the camera out. I don't walk down the street. I don't talk anymore. I've largely left that part out of my life. I've stopped documenting my life a while ago. Now I stop vlogging and giving my thoughts in the streets. And now I pretty much have resigned myself to giving y'all my thoughts after hours, including my friends. And I've been so focused on promoting them promoting Q, promoting Mika, 2K, Quentin, getting them geared up and putting people in better positions, right? And one of the reasons that I've done that is because I've started to take a back seat a little bit more because I've been doing this for a long time. I've been I've been I've been doing content creation in YouTube for over 10 years. A lot of people will discover me and they'll be like, oh my God, you new to the space. You new to the now, I'm one of the OGs. A lot of people don't understand that I'm one of the OGs of this. And very few content creators can say that they've been this consistent for this long and documenting their life and living their life basically online and as an open book. right? And now it's starting to become even more pronounced because I love visibility and I love the content creation, but it's starting to spill over really a whole lot into my regular life into where, you know, when I go downstairs and I love it and shout out to everybody that I met this weekend. Shout out to everybody that was down in Detroit. Shout out to everybody that I ran into. You know, I, I can't, I have to change my name on the DoorDash app and I have to go downstairs. And when I go and get my DoorDash, a lot of times I wind up getting stuck down there for like a half hour because I run into people and then you wind up kicking it. But I just honestly, and then when I run into people, I say, well, no, I'm just a regular person and I'm not on that Hollywood type stuff. And I just like to kick it with people. And so I just genuinely, no, no, I'm not burned out, Eric Daniels. Let's be clear. I'm not burned out at all. But I also like to disconnect. When I'm, when I'm on here, I love it. When I'm not on here, I love it. For the first time, I got an opportunity to watch an episode of Fallout. I didn't even know what that was. My nephew came to visit me down here and he was like, oh man, I got this new series. I was like, oh, okay, let's watch it. He's like, really? You gonna watch TV? I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna watch TV. And they were so surprised that I was gonna watch TV that it was almost like, oh my God, or whatever. Then I talked to Rita this morning and she like, hey, listen, you gotta do this and you, know, you gotta get geared up for that. And you know, you got this thing coming from a content creation perspective. And I was telling her, I said, listen, I'm not really sure that I wanna do that. Like, I'm not really sure that I want to be at the forefront of it. I don't mind participating in it, but I'm not sure that I want to be the one that's producing it or pushing it or any of that stuff. I just like showing up and talking. One of the reasons that I like Monday night so much is because Q, the one that do all of the recruiting, she do all of the work. I just show up and talk. I show up. She the one that control everybody on the panel. She, she does everything. And so that's why I value people so much because my true currency is not in the money that I make. It's not the opportunities that y'all think that I get. 
it's the people. The people are the ones that take care of me. And so I make sure that I take care of them back. I add value into their life. I make sure that I take care of them financially. I treat them really well and I give them the freedom to do what they do all the time. And so I'm trying to find the balance in my life, but it's very difficult because I've conditioned myself over the last 20 plus years to be a worker. You know, I've been hustling, I've been grinding, and I don't know how to turn it off. I don't know when to turn it off. And so I'm just slowly but surely navigating over into it. But Rita is like, yo, Anton, but this is right, like who you are. And so I'm kind of, I don't know how you describe it. It's not a midlife crisis because I don't plan on going anywhere, but I'm kind of pulling back. You know what I'm saying? I'm pulling back in corporate America. I've been pulling back when it comes to how I live my life. I've been spending more time with my daughter because I know that at 16 years old, she going into the 11th grade. She's got a lot more freedom and she doesn't spend as much time around me because she has her own friends and she got her own life. She got Taekwondo and you know, she likes to do things. And so I try to live every moment like it's my last and take it in while at the same time considering the possibility of what the future could hold. And I think that that's one of the things that's really difficult for us as people is that we get so used to doing the things that we do on a regular basis that we don't really consider what the future is like. When you think about your life, right, do you think about what it's going to be like 10 years from now? Because everything I do, I plan it out from a 10 year view. But you don't realize that it's really coming up faster than you think that it is. We live for the moment. We party for the moment. We do what we want to do for the moment. We mortgage our futures in order to make us feel good currently. But it don't always translate into being conducive for you. And the reason that I'm, I'm having this conversation with you guys is not that it's about me. And no, like I said, I don't burn out. I feel great. Look at Rita. Look at Rita. Want to make things difficult. It's not about me. I feel great. But what I'm using this as an example of is do you guys actually take into consideration what your future is supposed to look like? You know, we talk about getting rich and we talk about success and doubling our income. But to what end is what I'm asking you? Are you guys actually doing this for a reason or are you doing it just because it's the thing to do or you've been influenced by what's happening on social media? When we ask ourselves those questions like where do you see yourself in 10 years what is your life going to look like? All of that stuff. Do y'all consider what that looks like, honestly? Because a lot of times it's pie in the sky, but it has to be real for you. A lot of people that are retiring today, and I know that this is not the bag chasers issue, because we doing the things that's going to be conducive for the rest of our lives. A lot of people are going into their older age, not having the same capabilities of doing the things that they used to. You can't work as many hours as you was when you was 20 and 30. And you wasted your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, and even sometimes your early 50s. And you retired depending on Social Security with a whole bunch of debt. And then you then put that burden on somebody that's coming after you to ultimately have to take care of you just for you to be able to survive. I don't want that for you. I don't want that for you. Some of y'all are so dependent on your regular jobs, and we're going to talk about layoffs. We're going to talk about a lot of things. Some of y'all are so dependent on your current circumstance that if anything was to happen, you'd be crashed out tomorrow. I don't want that for you. Some of y'all are so stuck on this mentality that, oh, my God, it's just okay to be regular. Don't you know that the average and what regular looks like today is actually under duress and stressed and broken and broke? and destitute, and dying by yourself, I don't want that for you. When we have these conversations, whether it be on the Millionaire Morning Show, or whether it be on the Anton Daniels, or we joking on After Hours, I always say that I put the medicine in the candy, and when y'all join the Patreon and we start having these conversations, what I want you to start thinking about is, how does this translate into my life, and what does this look like? I was tossing and turning last night after having a conversation um, with Rita and I didn't really get good sleep last night because the only thing that I could think about is what the future would look like and I'm not sure that I'm ready not not ready financially but ready emotionally and, and, and mentally for what that could look like you know what I'm saying like 
I've never considered myself slowing down or I've never considered real delegation from a content creation perspective. You know, I've never really, when I retired when I was 37 year, years old back in 2019, I never really retired because I just translated that same energy into other things. And then I wound up going back into corporate America and then it just wound up being a whole nother thing, right? And so you never really slowed down. In the couple months that I did slow down, I was bored out of my mind. And I'm like, man, I'm not really sure what this looked like. And so I made up in my mind, nah, I'm not going to do it. And I'm always going to be productive and I'm always going to be visible and I'm always going to be here with you guys. But I want you guys to start thinking about what you want your future to look like. Do you have enough money put up for you to be able to be successful for the rest of your life? Can you maintain a lifestyle or do you have to pare back? Not that you want to pare back, but will you be forced to because you don't have any other choice? Even when it comes to people that's making a whole lot of money as far as these uh, NFL players and these NBA players, when retirement hit them, they get divorced, they fumble, they wind up realizing that they can't maintain the same lifestyle, they go broke, they trying to figure it out as they go, I don't want that to be you. I want us always to be living our life to the fullest now, but at the same time being proactive enough to be thinking about, thinking about what the future is. I don't know what my life looks like once my daughter is married and out the house. I don't know what my, I mean, I plan for it. You know, I plan for her to ultimately take over the companies that we built. And, you know, I want to get to a certain number of properties that she then takes over. And, you know, I, 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 I estate plan as far as what that, what that translates in, like if anything was to ever happen to me or, you know, I, I, I groom her and I put her in a position. And when I talk to Rita, a lot of times I say, Hey, listen, this is what we're going to do, and this is what we do, and I Miyagi her, and then I have a conversation with her, and I say, hey, tell me this, and tell me that, tell me that, and so she's telling me all of these things, and then I tell her, don't you realize that I just taught you how to build a house? Don't you realize I just taught you how to be a real estate mogul? Don't you realize this? Don't you realize that? What would, what would you do if anything was to happen to me? And I do this every year, and I test her, and it'd be at random times, oh, okay, well, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this, and I realize that I don't need that, and we will move this over, and this and that. Okay, good. You ready. You prepared. I'm always preparing the people around me for greatness in the moment, but the possibilities in the future, good and bad. And we have to start being proactive. We cannot keep living our life like an accident. We cannot keep acting like we don't know what's going to come and what's the inevitable. All of us gets old. All of us get tired. All of us eventually transition. All of us move differently. I'm tired of listening to y'all doing y'all fish fries. I'm tired of hearing GoFundMe's. I'm tired of people telling me that, oh my God, I was a part of the ministry. You wouldn't believe how many people say that they was a part of the church and they thought that God was just going to send the millions and then they get ready to retire and they ain't got nothing. And the church ain't taking care of them because they ain't got no pension. I want y'all to start being more proactive and thinking about what the possibilities are. And it's very uncomfortable. It's a very uncomfortable thought to think about. But it doesn't have to be. It could be even more blissful because every year gets better for me based off of the idea that I'm planning for my greatness. I want you to plan for your greatness, not for your retirement. Let me say that again for the people in the back before we get started with the show. I want you to plan for your greatness. I want you to plan for your greatness and not necessarily for your retirement. I want you to plan to live life beautifully. My goal in eight years is to be generating over a hundred thousand dollars every single month to maintain the current lifestyle that I already have. No debt, no none of that. And if I decide that I wanted to keep going after that, then I have the option to do that, but I'm not going to be forced to live a substandard lifestyle based off of what it is that I set for myself. And we got to have a different mindset. We got to dip. You, you want to leave something for your children. You want for your kids to go to college and not have to have student loan debt. You would want to, you know, I'm very traditional in that when my daughter gets married, I plan on giving her her house. There's no way in the world that my daughter, what, what as hard as her father works and as intentional as I am, is no reason I can't go back to the same standards that we used to have way back in the day in yesteryear to where the father pay for the wedding and he make sure that y'all have a home and you get started and you, you really start taking off in that way. The majority of what you building together has nothing to do with all of the arguments that you would get into as a broke couple. They should not be, go our children and the people that come after us should not be going through the same stuff that we going through. 
It's no reason why if anything was to ever happen to me or if anything was to ever happen to you that your chick is still paying a mortgage. It's no reason that y'all should not have life insurance. There's no reason why you shouldn't should not be putting into your 401k. There's no reason why with all of the knowledge, the information that we have every day and y'all tapping into the millionaire morning show on a regular basis that you still having your girl or you still having your child or you still having your son or you still having your daughter taking out student loans. You should literally be grooming them for their future. They don't have a choice as far as I'm concerned. Children don't have a choice. It's an if-then statement. If you want to continue to go down this path and live this phenomenal life, then this is the path that you're going to take as a result of it. It is very much planned out for you. If any time you decide to deviate off that path, then you lose my grace, and you're going to have to stand on your own. And this is how you build greatness. This is how we solve for the issues in our community. We have to set standards. It's not about what you want. It's about what it is that you have to do because it's not about you. It's not about you. And so I need y'all to make a sacrifice for your future and for the people that come after you. Have some uncomfortable conversations with yourself, not just with the people that's next to you. And let's do things in order, proper, and run up the bag. And I know this is not the sexy conversation to have because we're not talking about Bentleys and Rolls Royces and all of that stuff. But what I'm telling you is that this is the real fruit of life. This is what being blessed looks like. It's being able to love on other people because the way that you show that you love God is by making sure that you take care of the people that he put you on earth around. That's true love.